Welcome to the bold analysis. This newspaper I'm holding here is Nation. And um, I bumped on this interesting article. And uh, this is what I'm carrying here. Korea postpones hyped presser issues demands before he supports report. <laughs> I want to give you a snippet of what is here and Korea's new demand to William Ruto that have really, really raised eyebrows on what exactly is Moses Korea up to or what has triggered this. Before we get deep into these details, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and also so that when we publish any video you will be notified and I'm still saying thank you for those who are reaching out. Today I said that's one of the best days that the best gift you can give me is to make sure that you subscribe in this channel. Now, today is Saturday. On Thursday evening, Kuria shared a tweet and he said that I will not be sabotaged. And after that, he issued a press invite and he shared this presser saying that he's going to address journalists in his office on Friday at 9 a.m. Myself, I received. We received that invite. Actually, I received it, I think, in my, it was through the WhatsApp. And the country and even journalists were trying to, you know, second guess what exactly is Moses Kuria up to? Because that press briefing was not just an ordinary press briefing. It was coming because allegedly Moses Kuria was preparing the journalists that that press briefing is going to address the point of being sabotaged. So that, that hype was created and that press buzz was created that we were expecting Moses Kuria was going to tell the country something. Now, on Friday, 5 a.m., journalists went, went to his Arambe, to his office along the Arambe House, Arambe Avenue. And uh, that press was postponed, cancelled last minute. He never addressed the journalists. Only later, for a statement to be released that, uh, that I want, in, and that is what has been captured in this, in this newspaper. There was a question of what led to the last minute cancellation of that press briefing or what did Moses Kuria want to tell the country? What is this that he didn't say? <laughs> that is it. Remember this week, for the first time, Kenya Kwanzaa cabinet never had a sitting. None. You, you can go and search. There was no cabinet dispatch. There was no meeting. If you look at the president's diary, there was no cabinet meeting on Tuesday. And that's why there was a bit of a rumble. The same day, Raila Odinga met William Ruto with an understanding that there was a cabinet reshuffle in the effect to the same which could have been affected by that. Now, what Moses Kuria is telling us after postponing that press briefing is about NADCO. And he's saying that he will not support NADCO report unless these three conditions are met. And I want to show you those. I want to read just that part. Mr. Kuria, who yesterday rescheduled his planned press conference, has given three irreducible minimums requirements to Dr. Ruto and Mr. Odinga to rally support, especially in Mount Kenya. I don't know whether Ruto and Raila's NADCO needs a public support, some popular vote, because it's not going to a referendum. It's actually supposed to be discussed in parliament. Moses Kuria doesn't sit in parliament. And I want us to get that part. 
Moses Kure is not a parliamentarian. Moses Kure is a cabinet member. So I still don't understand why Moses Kure will come and say, I don't support. What is the significance of your support or lack of the same? Look at his irreducible minimums. He's saying he wants the two leaders who have affirmed their backing for the report to recommend specific way to address the issue of the elusive two-thirds gender rule, number one. Number two, guaranteeing minimum returns, I think that's for the coffee and tea, and the one man, one shilling, one vote formula in the distribution of resources. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be very, I want us to be very objective in this. And no one has a monopoly of idea here. Moses Kuria is saying, you know, that NADCO, there was a sitting, the one that met, the team that met in Bombers, where anyone who had an input was allowed to appear. You just send a message, just send sick, you'll be invited, then you make your point. Of course, he was on the side of government, he never appeared. Then after that report was released, this time round, it was adopted in parliament. And after it was tabled in parliament, 13 amendments, constitutional amendments, have been sponsored by Kimani Chungwa and a majority, minority leader Opio Wandali. So, apparently, after even that debate in parliament, throughout that debate, he was quiet. Then, from the blues, Moses Kuria wakes up one morning and says, I don't support, and I want you guys to have guaranteed minimum returns, one man, one shilling, one vote, and blah, blah. From where I am seated, the main reason why Moses Kuria called that press briefing is not NADCO. And this NADCO report, rejecting NADCO report, was a smoke screen. I don't think that uh, Moses Kuria was calling that press briefing to talk about NADCO, about those irreducible minimums. But there could have been something behind the scene. Wahume Tuku reported that there was some land tussle somewhere on, on some government parastatal. But I read more to this. And I just want us to look at it. I don't know, what do you think Moses Kure wanted to tell the country? Because the notes are not tying up. Uh, nation team reached out to, in this article, if you buy Nation today, you'll get that article. It's on page, uh, what, page 7. They reached out to Kimani Chungwa and they asked Kimani Chungwa about Moses Kuria's input. And, they, and Kimani Chungwa said, his assertion, or rather his statement, or his opinion, has been bypassed with the time because the document is already, has already been passed in the National Assembly. So even before he called that press briefing, Moses Kuria knew very well that his opinion had been bypassed because at what point was it going to be addressed? Unless he called for an executive appeal. An executive appeal does not did a press briefing. The thing here, Moses Kure deliberately told the country that someone is now sabotaging him. And I see a high likelihood that Moses Kuria was going to suffer a midst a cabinet reshuffle. I may be wrong on this, but I wish, I wish I'm wrong. Moses Kuria was staring at a cabinet reshuffle because that was, by the way, um, in that ministry when you the communication guy is there. Most of people who are in government now, in communication desks, in communication offices are actually former journalists. They are people that have been poached from the newsroom. There's a bit of a panic on what Moses Kuria was, was gonna, going to say. I am seeing some possibilities here. But one, Moses Kuria knew that probably there was a hatched scheme for him to be ejected 
out of cabinet or for him again to suffer another cabinet reshuffle. So what's on the table? Number one, um, when he recently did the roadshow, this on visiting ministries, he gave some low marks to some cabinet members. Simon Chelul Chelugui and Aisha Jumwa. And that was a problem. That he really crossed path with some members of the cabinet. And that could have been at the table. Number two, I am, and this, this has, and if you read, if you also read around, you will bump on this. That William Ruto had a plan to reshuffle the cabinet. And that plan was early January. But he was, we would also plan to run a handshake, you know, to, hand, to run a handshake narrative by probably picking some new faces and injecting in cabinet just a few days after meeting Raila Odinga. It might not be, and, and this was the school of thought, that maybe, and, and I think when we're talking to someone who was analyzing why sometimes, uh, sometimes Raila meeting Ruto at that time could be over-interpreted, over-understood, was uh, they met on AUC job. But how about if the next day Ruto had planned reshuffle? Ruto goes to Nyanza and picks someone who might not necessarily be a politician. Picks someone and puts in cabinet. Then the next day, another newspaper headline is sponsored that such candidate has been, uh, that, that person has been given cabinet slot over the handshake between Ruto and Raila. Someone said about it. And so clearly, that was one of the things. Number two, it could still be about the Mount Kenya politics. Very murky. Mount Kenya politics is very murky. People have been asking about the new sports and the, his position on Kiambu stalemate between the president and Wamatangi. So it could still border, it could border, it, it could still border the same. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. And I promise you that before the end of next week, we shall understand. We will know. Why exactly was that press briefing cancelled? Thank you. Hi guys. So I'm so happy finally the February project is done. I know most of us have been talking about this. We did know it would come to fruition but I'm in Mamalusi and uh, I've managed to get 13 out. Yes, I was planning for seven but who knows, eh? God has another way of doing his own things. That we managed to our to 13. And apart from that, we've also done some food stuff because you know these guys are how Mabu Miko hospitality for long. Na hawajakuwa waki hawajakuwa kifanya kazi. So what we decided is that whatever has remained, we do some food stuff for them. And I'm just so happy that they are going home and that to reunite with the rest of their family. Some have been here for long, so I just want to say thank you on behalf of Bold Charity Network, my family, myself, and everyone. In whatever way you've come through this, Nasema Santeni Sana. These women are out. Now I'll just give two or three chance for some two kitumoja. Can just say thank you. That's a who you my name is Winnie Awol. To Meshkuru, Kakuja Kutoa Uku, to make a Uku for long. Na the bill was too much, and Yatunga was a co-afford. But Bold Charity Network, in Mekuja Katutoa, Natuna Semania Santi. I'll see you. My daughter is Yawanjiru, I'm a mama favor. Na taka kuambia santi kwa sababu bili likuwa mob, singeweza kulipa But kwa jiri ya mungu, ati nimi natoka Santi, God bless you all I hold Kwa kiwa 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 Kwa Kama mimi ni dindisi chanji wa ndaiki 15, ni nengangana, ni kangangana, ni kapata, ni kalipa, ni kandua, ni rudi kwa ward. Sai, I'm very happy. Niko out, nitaenda sasa kungana na familia yangu. Asande ni sana.
mimi naitwa Lydia Chelimo mtili yangu ilitoka the 16 but singe manage but coach ameni wesesha nimetoka huku ndatoka leo nimeshukuru sana na nimefurahi Yeah. So guys that was it I had to give you this confirmation that yes. finally to me manage and may God meet you in the hour of need I spent two days here listening to their stories uh, and their stories are testament of how we need to come for the society for all those who participated in this bold charity network this was our CSR for the month of February akimbarikiwe we will do this next time asante sana more happy than them asante Sao?